بث فيها من كل دابة وتصريف الرياح والسحاب المسخر بين السماء والأرض وتصريف الرياح والسحاب المسخر بين السماء والأرض لآيات لآيات لقوم يعقلون ومن الناس من يتبعون يتخذ من دون الله أندادا يحبونهم كحب الله والذين آمنوا أشد حبا لله ولو يرى الذين ظلموا إذ يرون العذاب أن القوة لله جميعا وأن الله شديد العذاب حسمك الله يبارك فيك ممكن تقرأون آية وترجم آية 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 هكذا إن شاء الله إن شاء الله حفظكم الله قراءة جميلة أصلا يتقبل منا I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan from, from the Satan the most accursed verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and, then, and in the alternation of night and day and the ships which sail through the sea and that which is of use to mankind and the water which Allah sends down from the sky and makes the earth alive therewith after its death and the moving living creatures of all kinds that he is scattered therein, and in the veering of winds and clouds, which are held between the sky and the earth, are indeed evidences and proofs for people of understanding. And of mankind are some who take for worship others besides Allah's rivals. They love them as they love Allah, but those who believe love Allah more than anything else. If only those who did wrong, who do wrong could see, when they will see in the torment that all, all power belongs to Allah and that Allah is severe in punishment. Aynam. إِذْ تَبَرَّأَ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوُ الْعَذَابِ ورأوا العذاب وتقطعت بهم الأسباب. When those who were followed disown those who followed them and they see the torment, then all their relations will be cut off from them. وقال الذين اتبعوا لو أن لنا كرة فنتبرأ منهم كما تبرأوا منا كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم حسرات عليهم وما هم بخارجين من النار and those who followed will say, If only we had one more chance to return to the worldly life, we would disown them as they have disowned us. Thus Allah will show them their deeds as regrets for them, and they will never get out of the fire. <laughs> ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين O oh, mankind, eat of that which is lawful and good on the earth and follow not the footsteps of Satan Verily he is to you an open enemy
إِنَّمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالسُّوءِ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He, Satan, commands you only what is evil and what is sinful, and that you should say against Allah what you know not. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا أَلْفَيْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاءُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَهْتَدُونَ when it is said to them, follow what Allah has sent down, they say, nay, we shall follow what we found our fathers following. Even though their fathers did not understand anything, nor were they guided. وَمَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَنْعِقُ بِمَا لَا يَسْمَعُ إِلَّا دُعَاءً وَنِدَاءً صُمٌ بُكْمٌ عُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ and the example of those who disbelieves is as that of him who shouts to those flock of sheep that hears nothing but calls and cries. They are deaf, dumb and blind, so they do not understand. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum wa shkuru وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ O oh, you who believe, eat of the lawful things that we have provided you, and be grateful to Allah, if indeed, if it is indeed He whom you worship. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ he has forbidden you only the dead animals and blood and the flesh of swine and that which is slaughtered as a sacrifice for other than, others than Allah. But if one is forced by necessity without willful disobedience nor transgressing due limits, then there is no sin on him. Truly Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Verily those who conceal what Allah has sent down of the book and purchase a small gain therein, they they eat, they eat into their bellies nothing but fire. Allah will not speak to them on the day of resurrection, nor, nor purify them, and theirs will be a painful torment. <laughs> فَمَا أَصْبَرَهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ 
They are those who have purchased error at the price of guidance and torment at the price of forgiveness. So how bold they are to the fire. ذلك بأن الله نزل الكتاب بالحق وإن الذين اختلفوا في الكتاب لفي شقاق بعيد That is because Allah has sent down the book in truth and verily those who disputed, who disputed as regards the book are far away in opposition. ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموقون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا it is not piety that you turn your faces towards east or west, but piety is the quality of the one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the book, the prophets, and gives his wealth in spite of love for it, to the kinsfolk, to the orphans, and to the poor, to the wayfarer, to those who ask and to set slaves free. They perform the, the prayer and give the charity and who fulfill their covenant when they make it and who are patient in extreme pov poverty and ailment and at the time of fighting during the battles. Such are the people of truth and they are the pi pious. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم القصاص في القتلى الحر بالحر والعبد بالعبد والأنثى بالأنثى فمن عفي له من أخيه شيء فتلى O oh, you who believe, the law of equality and punishment is prescribed for you in case of murder, the free for the free, the slave for the f slave, and the female for the female. But if the killer is forgiven by the brother or the relatives of the killed against blood money, then adhering to it with fairness and payment of the blood money to the heir should be made in fairness. This is an alleviation and a mercy from your Lord. So after this, whoever transgresses the limits, i.e. kills the killer, kills the killer after taking the blood money, he shall have a painful torment. <laughs> And there is a saving of life for you in the laws of equality and punishment, O oh, men of understanding, that they that you may become the pious. 
كتب عليكم إذا حضر أحدكم الموت إن ترك خيرا الوصية للوالدين إن ترك خيرا الوصية للوالدين والأقربين بالمعروف حقا على المتقين It is prescribed for you when death approaches any of you, if he leaves wealth, that he makes a bequest to parents and next of kin, according to reasonable manners. This is the duty upon the pious. فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ بَعْدَ مَا سَمِعَهُ فَإِنَّمَا إِثْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَهُ <laughs> but he who fears from then whoever then whoever changes the bequest after hearing it, the sin shall be on those who make the change. Truly Allah is all hearer, all knower. فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوصٍ جَنَفًا أَوْ إِثْمًا فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ But he who fears from a testator some unjust act or wrongdoing and thereupon he makes peace between the parties concerned, there shall be no sin on him. Certainly Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh, you who believe, observing the fasting is prescribed for you, as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become the pious. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدِيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينٍ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Observing fasting for a fixed number of days, but if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number should be made up from other days. And as for those who can fast with difficulty, they have a choice either to fast or to feed a poor person. For each day, but whoever does good of his own accord, it is better for him, and that you fast is better for you, if you only knew. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ The month of Ramadan, in which was revealed the Qur'an, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion. 
So whoever of you cites the crescent on the first night of the month of Ramadan, he must observe the fast that month. And whoever is ill or on a journey, the same number of days which one missed must be made up from other days. Allah intends for you ease, and he does not want to make things difficult for you. He wants that you must complete the same number of days, and that you must magnify Allah for having guided you, so that you may be grateful to him. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ and when my slaves ask you, O Muhammad, concerning me, then answer them, I am indeed near to them by my knowledge. I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls upon me. So let them obey me and believe in me, so that they may be led aright. <laughs> فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبِيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّوا الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقَرَبُوهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ it is made lawful for you to have sexual relations with your wives on the night of the fasts. They are a, a body cover for you, and you are the same for them. Allah knows that you used to deceive yourselves, so he turned to you, accepted your repentance and forgave you. So now have sexual relations with them and seek that which Allah has ordained for you, and eat and drink until the white thread of dawn appears appears to you distinct from the black thread. Then complete your fast till nightfall, and do not have sexual relations with them while you are in, in the mosque, while you are confined in the mosque for prayers. These are the limits set by Allah, so approach them not. Thus does Allah make clear his signs and proofs to mankind that they may become the pious. ولا تأكلوا أموالكم بينكم بالباطل وتدلوا بها إلى الحكام لتأكلوا وتدلوا بها إلى الحكام لتأكلوا فريقا من أموال الناس بالإثم and eat up not one another's property unjustly in any illegal way, nor give bribery to the rulers that you may knowingly eat up a part of the property of others sinfully. Yes, قُلْ هِيَ مَوَاقِيتُ لِلنَّاسِ وَالْحَجِّ وَلَيْسَ الْبِرُّ بِأَنْ تَأْتِيَ 
تُبْتُ الْبُيُوتَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهَا وَلَكِنْ ولكن البر من اتقى ولكن البر من اتقى وقت البيوت من أبوابها واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون they ask you, O oh Muhammad, about the new moons. Say, these are signs to mark fixed periods of time for mankind and for the pilgrimage. It is not piety that you enter the houses from the back, but piety is the quality of the one who fears Allah. So enter the houses through their proper doors and fear Allah that you may be successful. <laughs> Uh, okay. Is that enough? Hey, what's about Subhanallah al You can carry on a little. Salam wa rahmatullah. Sheikh Zakaria, would the care take a ziada? Well, I've been here, Sheikh. That's father, that's father. Stem to Ain Sarah. Allah is that. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ And fight in the way of Allah those who fight you, but transgress not the limits. Truly Allah likes not the transgressors. وَقُتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ وَالْفِتْنَةُ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ وَلَا تُقَاتِلُوهُمْ عِنْدَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ حَتَّى يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِيهِ فَإِن قَاتَلُوكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوهُمْ كَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ And kill them wherever you find them, and turn them out from where they have you turned you out. And the trials and afflictions and polytheism are worse than killing. And fight not with them at the sanctuary. Sanctu at the sanctuary in, at Mecca, unless they first fight you there. But if they attack you, then kill them. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers. <laughs> but if they cease, then Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ فَإِنْ انْتَهَوْا فَلَا عُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ And fight them until there is no more disbelief from worshipping of others along with Allah. And... All and every kind of worship is for Allah alone. But if they cease, let there be no transgression except against the polytheists and wrongdoers. الشهر الحرام بالشهر الحرام والحرمات قصاص فمن اعتدى عليكم فاعتدوا عليه بمثل ما اعتدى عليكم واتقوا الله واعلموا ان الله مع المتقين The sacred month is for the sacred month and for the prohibited things there is the law of equity there is the law of equality then whoever transgresses the prohibition against you, you transgress likewise against them. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is with the pious. وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى 
تهلكة وأحسن إن الله يحب المحسنين and spend in the cause of Allah and do not throw yourselves into destruction and do good. Truly Allah loves the do-gooders. And perform properly all the ceremonies according to the ways of Prophet Muhammad, the Hajj and the Umrah, the pilgrimage to, to Mecca for Allah. But if you are prevented from completing them, sacrifice an animal such as you can afford. And do not shave your heads until the animal reaches the place of sacrifice. And whosoever of you is ill or has an ailment in his scalp, he must pay a, a ransom of either observing fasts for three days or giving charity or offering sacrifice. Then if you are in safety and whosoever performs the Umrah in the months of Hajj before performing the Hajj, he must slaughter an animal such as he can afford. But if he cannot afford it, he should observe fasts three days during the Hajj and seven days after his return, making ten days in all. This is for him whose family is not present at the Masjid al-Haram. And fear Allah much and know that Allah is severe in punishment. <coughs> حيا الله شيخ زكريا أحسن الله إليك وجزاك الله خير استمتعنا جدا بهذه القراءة thank you شيخ زكريا we were really enjoying this beautiful recitation ما الله تعالى حيل ريوارد الآن نستأذنك أن نبدأ في عرش اليوم I ask permission from Brother Zakaria to begin the dars of today Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man istanna bi sunnati wa ahtada bi adihi ila yawm al-dini amma ba'd. Hayakum Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, or hayakum Allah, your ikhwa and akhawat, ila hadha al-liqa. Please give me a minute, a minute. Uh, <clears throat> you hear me? I am, Shekhana. Right. 
Uh, as we said that uh, today, inshallah, we are going to go through the normal uh, sessions, the normal uh, sessions that we uh, were doing daily after the Quran recitation. And today, inshallah ta'ala, it's going to be with me, your brother Muhammad al-Maliki from Medina, Saudi Arabia. Naam. Faddal ya Shaykh Aqeel. Ayywa Shaykh, I'm going to be in English, I'm going to be in English. Then I'm going to be in English. I'm going to be in English. طيب أقول إخواني وأخواتي حياكم الله نحن كنا في إنصات لقراءة خاشعة جميلة والآن هو وقت الدرس المعتاد ونسأل الله عز وجل أولا أن يوفقنا وإياكم لصيام وقيام شهر رمضان وأن يجعله خالصا لوجهه. نعم. وترجم لكم شيخنا؟ نعم لأنه العربي عشان الأخ زكي يترجم بالإشارة للعرب. حسنا حسنا بسم الله. أو تريد أن أترجم كما تحب. لا 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 لكن الأفضل أنك تترجم عشان يكون الأخ زكي معنا على all praises are due to Allah and may peace and blessings be upon the final messenger and upon his family and companions to proceed. We have now finished the, the section of today's session that is, relates to the Quranic recitation. And now we shall take the portion of the session that is our Islamic lesson. And today's Islamic lesson will be del delivered by myself, your brother, Muhammad al-Maliki from Medina. <تصفيق> نعم وموضوع الليلة هو عن النية في الصيام وأن هذه النية كما هو معلوم أمرها عظيم في الإسلام And today's topic and subject will be the intention that we have when we fast and as it's well known the matter of one's intention is a great matter in Al-Islam. أولاً في حديث عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نوى فهذا دليل على أن النية شرط في Firstly, we see the hadith of Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, where the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Indeed, actions are but by intention, and everyone will have that which they intended. This hadith is a proof and an indication that having an intention is a condition of the correctness and the acceptance of all actions. ومن حديث عمر يتبين لنا أن النيات يجب أن تسبق الأعمال لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات فجعل الباء للتعدية فيكون العمل لاحقا للنية والنية سابقة للعمل بمعنى أنه لا يصلح أن يصلي الإنسان ركعتين ثم بعد ذلك ينوي بها مثلا سنة الفجر أو يصلي ركعتين ثم ينوي بها بعد أن صلى أنها تكون فريضة الفجر بل لا بد أن تسبق النية للعمل وكذلك لو أنه أخرج مبلغا من المال صدق رأى مسكينا فأعطاه مبلغا ثم رجع فحسب قيمة الزكاة الواجب عليه فوجدها مثل ذلك المال أو أقل فقال إذا تكون تلك زكاتي 
فنقول بأن هذا لا يصح لأن العمل تقدم النية والشرط أن تتقدم النية على العمل So when we look at this hadith the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him said indeed actions are but by intention and from this phrase and this part of the narration we learn that it is essential that our intention precedes it comes before the action that we take and in the Arabic language indeed actions are but by I suppose this by is uh, indicative in Arabic the ba it, in, it indicates that the intention precedes the action so when we say this we learn and we, we benefit that it's not correct for an individual to pray two units of prayer, to pray two rak'ah of prayer, and then afterwards make their intention that what I've just prayed is the sunnah, the example prayer um, of, or the non-obligatory prayer associated with Salatul Fajr. Or it's not, it's not um, accepted that they were to pray two, ruk- two units and then make the intention these two units were the obligatory units of Fajr. And similarly, we can say the same with giving charity. It's not correct for an individual to give, if they see a poor person, to give that individual some charity. Um, and then afterwards, they make their calculations and they realize that the amount that they gave that individual was the same amount that they are due to pay as obligatory charity. So they cannot then retrospectively say, Actually, my intention in giving that individual the money was this obligatory charity that I have to pay. So the intention must precede the action. ومن هنا نقول بأن الصيام هو أحد تلك العبادات العظيمة وهو أحد أركان الإسلام لا بد أن يبنى على نية سابقة للصوم. So similarly, the fasting, which is one of the pillars of Islam, it's essential that preceding the fasting, there is an intention. وجوب تبيت النية من الليل وسنتكلم عن حالات تبيت النية متى تكون لازمة. And we also see, or, or as a result of this, we see the hadith, the narration where the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, "There is no fasting for that individual who does not spend the night, having had the intention to fast." And this is a narration that comes with lots of different wordings on many different companions of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And it indicates the obligation of having the intention. And we will explain, um, we'll explain coming up when it is absolutely essential and it's an obligation to have this intention. Uh, <clears throat> النية العامة لصيام رمضان وذلك عند دخول أول ليلة من ليالي رمضان فإنه إن عقد العزم من تلك الليلة أنه يصوم الشهر كاملا فهذا مجزئ على الأرجح من أقوال أهل العلم ولا يلزمه أن يجدد النية كل ليلة إلا إذا قطع تلك النية بما so the first matter is that we have a general intention that we fast Ramadan and this general intention takes place or it, it holds firm when the first night of Ramadan enters. We have this firm intention within our hearts that we will fast Ramadan. And this intention that we have, this binding intention at the beginning of Ramadan, that we fast it in its entirety, the correct 
opinion of the people of knowledge is that this is sufficient. So the individual doesn't then have to renew their intention every night, except if there is some breakage in their fasting, which we'll explain now. <clears throat> قيامه لطعام السحور مثلا هذا نيته تماما تشبه كالذي قام يتوضا وذهب ليصلي فان وضوءه يفيد بانه ذاهب للصلاه so when an individual wakes up to have the pre-dawn meal the suhoor this is an indication of the individual's intention to fast just as when an individual wants to pray, they make the wudu. This action is indicative of their intention to go and pray. And if he cut his intention with the intention of the journey, or if he was sick, he cut his intention with the intention of the journey, from the journey of the journey, or from the disease, وأصبح وهو غير عازم على الصوم أصبح طلع عليه الفجر وهو غير عازم على الصوم عازم على الفطر بسبب المرض الذي به أو بسبب السفر الذي عزم أن يعقده أو بدأه من الليل أو حتى يعني قبيل الفجر فإن هذه النية الجديدة التي هي نية الفطر تمحو أو تنسخ النية التي سبقت وهي نية الصوم فإذا أصبح بعد الفجر أدن الفجر فقال إذا أصوم اليوم هذا الذي هو من رمضان ولن أفطره فنقول له هذه النية لا تؤهله لاحتساب صيام ذلك اليوم لأنها نشأت بعد طلوع الفجر وكان الواجب أن يجعلها قبل طلوع الفجر إذا إذا نوى أن يفطر يوم غد لسفر أو مرض فلما أصبح أراد أن يصوم فإن هذا الصوم لا يجزئه لأن النية لم تبت من الليل عنده على الصوم So when an individual's intention breaks, their, their intention to fast, it breaks. And that can be when an individual intends to go on a journey or if a person is sick and they reach the morning and they're in a state in which they know they cannot fast and they've woken up with the intention of not fasting. Rather, they've woken up with the intention of eating that day due to the excuse that they have from illness or going on a journey. This is uh, considered a breakage in this general intention that they had. And this new intention, i.e. the intention of breaking the fast, it abrogates or it erases the previous intention that they had when they made the intention to fast Ramadan in its entirety. And then if, if an individual wakes up and they wake up during the time when Fajr has started and they have the intention not to fast, if the Adhan is then made and then the Salah is about to be prayed, then they make the intention to fast. This is not correct. Rather, what's obligatory is that this intention that holds firm within the heart is an intention that, that, that is made during the night, so before the Fajr breaks. So um, whoever wakes up and then the Fajr has broken and they want to fast um, and their intention initially was not to fast, their fasting is not correct because they haven't spent the night, any portion of the night with the intention of fasting. وكذلك لو uh... أن امرأة حائضا أو نفساء وطهرت في أثناء الليل من ليالي رمضان فإنها يلزمها أن تبيت النية على, صو... على الصوم من الغد 
فإن لم يحصل عندها ذلك فأصبحت فإنها لا يصح منها صوم ذلك اليوم لأنها لم تكن قد استحضرت نية الصوم فلا بد من أن تقضي ذلك اليوم مضافا إلى ما سبقه من أيام أفطرتها بسبب الحيض أو النفاس لأن النية شرط في صحة العمل ولازم أن تسبق العمل Similarly, the menstruating woman or the one who is having uh, postnatal bleeding, if they are to become pure and the, the bleeding stops during the night, so before the fajr comes in, it's essential for them to then make the intention to fast the next day. If they do not do this and they reach the morning, i.e. if they don't make the intention, then they reach the morning, their fast is not, uh, is not correct. And what they must do for that day, they don't fast that day, and they must make up that day from the other days. Because the intention is a condition of the fast's correction, and it must be made during the night time. بقي أن نقول أن هذه النية التي يجب أن تسبق الصوم إنما هي في كل صوم واجب مثل صوم رمضان في زمان رمضان. أو صوم قضاء رمضان في غير رمضان أو صوم النذر أو الكفارة فإن هذه الأصومة كلها واجبة فيجب فيها تبييت النية من قبل الفجر من الليل إلى قبل طلوع الفجر في أي وقت من هذا الزمن نوى أن يصوم من الغد فالصوم صحيح أما في صوم النافلة كصوم الاثنين والخميس والأيام البيض وصيام يوم وقال يوم أو أي صوم نافلة فلا بأس أن تنشأ النية من أثناء النهار شريطة ألا يكون قد أتى مفطرا كالجماع أو الطعام أو الشراب وأن يكون قبل انتصاف النهار نعم So this is the niya, this is the intention that must precede the fasting. And this intention is the intention that must be for every fast that is obligatory. So every fast for Ramadan that is done during the month of Ramadan, this is the intention that must be had, the intention during the night. The making up of fasts for Ramadan outside the month of Ramadan. Another example of the obligatory fasts where we must make this intention. Similarly, if someone makes an oath that they will fast, then it becomes obligatory that they must do this fast. Or if they must fast um, due to a penalty that they have incurred in the Islamic legislation, then again, this is the intention that they must have. They must have the intention during the night. As for the different type of fasting, the fasting that is not obligatory and it's optional, like fasting on Mondays and Thursdays and the middle days of the month, the, the days where the moon is bright, then there is no harm in making the intention during the day for these fasts. With the condition, however, that the individual hasn't eaten anything and that they have made that intention before noon. So before 12 o'clock um, in the afternoon or before midday. Now. وأيضا أن لا يكون جامع ما بعد الفجر ويعني ما يكون جامع بعد الفجر. And also that they haven't had any sexual relations from the time of fajr until they make their intention. والله تعالى أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه عبد الحكيم. Is there any questions? Yes, there's a question. Bear with me. No. Is it halal to use the hand sanitizer with alcohol in there and ethnohol? No. Uh, يقول السائل هل uh, هو مباح أن نستعمل 
المعقمات اليدوية التي فيها الكحول نعم نص العلماء على جواز استعمالها لأنها ضرورة ولأن النسبة فيها أو أو لأنها ضرورة ولأن لا تدخل الفم بس شريطة ألا يتناول الطعام وهي على يده يعني إذا جاء يأكل طعام باليد مباشرة فلا بد أن يكون قد غسل يده جيدا حتى يزيل أثر ذلك الكحول من اليد. So the question is about the permissibility of using hand sanitizer which contains alcohol. So the Sheikh said yes. The scholars of Al Islam have mentioned that this is something that's permissible to use because it's something that's a necessity, and also the alcohol it doesn't enter one's mouth. It doesn't enter one's mouth. You don't eat it. But when we use it, we must be careful that once we've sanitized our hands with this substance, that we then wash the hands before we eat, because it's possible that if we do not, and straight away we use the sanitizer and then we eat. That some of the alcohol can enter our mouths and we can ingest it, so we must wash our hands first. Okay, another question: um, If you're eat, if you're uh, fasting, and you then you start to drink and eat, like you said before, uh, you forgot and you started to eat and drink. Then while you're eating, you remember: Do you spit it out or do you finish what you're chewing? Now, the Akhir question is. إذا نسي الإنسان وهو صائم فأكل فه وتذكر وهو يمضغ فهل يكمل مضغ الطعام وهض وبلعه أم يجب عليه طرحه الجواب متى تذكر أنه صائم فعليه أن يلفظ ما في فمه فإن ابتلع بعد التذكر فإنه uh, so the, I suppose the, um, w when an individual remembers that um, they are fasting and they have a morsel of food in their mouth, then it becomes incumbent upon them. They should throw it, they should spit it out and take it out because as soon as an individual realizes they're fasting, then to eat any food and ingest it becomes an act that breaks a fast. Okay, Jazakallah. Um, there's someone here that's typing a question, I'll get them to finish. What the question, from what I can see, is if you're in a polygamous situation and it's difficult for you to travel from one wife to the other, especially in this situation of the virus, are you held accountable? Or do you still have to um, go out, even though the law says not to go out? نعم السائل يقول لو كان الرجل له زوجتان بيتان ولكن بسبب الظروف الراهنة والمنع من التنقل لا يستطيع الذهاب من بيت إلى الآخر فهل هو آثم بعدم ذهابه إلى البيت الآخر؟ واستمراره في البقاء في هذا البيت أم لا الجواب الله عز وجل يقول في كتابه العزيز لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها وهذا الإنسان الذي أدركه الحظر وهو في بيت إحدى زوجتيه ليس عليه إثم في البقاء في ذلك البيت دون الذهاب إلى البيت الآخر لأنه ممنوع من ذلك ممنوع نظاما وممنوع أيضا بسبب الخوف من الوباء وعلى هذا فلا حرج عليه ولا ولا يمتنع من يعني مكالمة أهلي في ذلك البيت في اليوم الذي يفترض أنه لهم من أجل إدخال السرور عليهم وتلطيف الجو وتهدئة الأوضاع والاطمئنان على أهله في ذلك البيت لكن يكون ذلك في اليوم الذي هو مخصص لذلك البيت فعلى فرض أنه في هذا البيت اليوم الثلاثاء ويفترض أنه غدا يكون هناك لكن بسبب الحضر لا يستطيع أن يكون هناك فإنه غدا يتواصل مع البيت الآخر ويسأل عن أحوالهم ويسأل كذا و 
يعني يعطيهم حقهم ولو ينعزل في غرفة دون زوجته بل ينعزل في غرفة دون زوجته الأخرى ويحادث زوجته التي هي تسكن وحدها يحادثها عبر النقل المباشر ويتكلم معها يلطف الجو حتى يعني لا يثقل ذلك عليها فهذا أقل ما يكون من حقها والله أعلم So with regards in response to this question, we must remember that Allah the Most High says, Allah doesn't burden a soul more than it can bear. So this individual who is um, in one of his wife's house, houses, um, there is no sin upon them to remain within that house because they are not allowed um, due to the legislation of the land to move and also they should not move out of fear of getting the sickness. However, this doesn't prevent this person from talking to the other household. So, for example, on the days in which he would be at the second wife's house, the wife that he's not staying at, at his house, he should then take this opportunity to call her. Um, but he should only do so on the day that's her day. Um, he should call her, ask, ask how the family is, how things are. And when he does this, he should do so in a private uh, forum. So he should go away from his, his wife that he's living with and do it so there's a, a sense of privacy. So he should talk and he should ask about the household on the days that he is apportioned to her so that she can feel like she isn't isolated. So as to make her happy, and to make her feel included, and Allah knows best. Okay, I've got one last question here. Um, uh, it's in regards to uh, children fasting, because of the long days and uh, the iftar finishing, at, uh, you know, quite late. Um, is it still obligatory for children to uh, to fast um, from the age of visit, from the age of puberty, if they're having trouble with it? Uh, الأخ يسأل يقول بالنسبة للأطفال هل يجب تصميمهم خصوصا أن النهار طويل في هذه الأيام في بلادهم في بريطانيا وأوروبا والغرب الجواب الأفضل أن يعود الأطفال على الصيام وقد كان السلف يأمرون صبيانهم بالصوم فإذا أرادوا الطعام ألهوهم بالدمى باللعب فإن كانوا لا يقدرون وتأذوا فلا حرج من إفطارهم إن كانوا دون سن البلوغ أما من كان قد بلغ فإنه لا يحل له أن يفطر بل عليه أن يصبر إلا إذا يعني أدى إلى يعني أضرار صحية أو هلكة حينئذ يستوي هو والكبير لكن لا يظهر أن هذا يؤدي إلى أضرار صحية أو هلكة بوجه عام إلا ربما حالة يكون الشاب فيها أصلا عنده مرض يتأذى من عدم الطعام فعندئذ هذا حالة خاصة أما على شكل على هيئة العموم فإن كل من بلغ لزمه الصوم و و ولو وجد المشقة لأن الأصل أن هذه العبادات فيها شيء من المشقة ولهذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعائشة أجرك على قدر نصبك على قدر التعب فكلما زاد التعب بسبب العبادة لا بقصد الإنسان فإنه يزيد الأجر و الأولى أن نشجع الصبيان على الصوم ولو نام ولو ندعهم ينامون نوقظهم وقت الصلاة فقط حتى لو قضوا النهار نوما أفضل من أن يتعودوا على الفطر في نهار رمضان والله تعالى So as, as relates to this it's it's for the parents it's upon the parents to make the children used to fasting. And the Salaf, the early Muslims, they used to train their children to fast. 
such that if they became hungry, they would distract them by playing games with them so they didn't think about having the food. So, but if, if, if it comes to an extent where it's very, very difficult, then the, the children who are younger than the age of puberty, then they may, they may break their fast. However, those who are of a mature age, then upon them is to have patience, unless if they were to continue their fast, they would come to some great harm, or they were, for example, to become severely ill. And in this matter, uh, they can break their fast. But in this matter, they are equal to any other person who is, has, has come of age, i.e. anyone who, if they're fasting, if they're going to die or be very, very ill, they should break the fast. And this is usually with the person who is sick and who um, is, is affected um, in this way by fasting. So in summary, everyone who has reached an age of uh, the age of puberty, um, it's obligatory upon them to fast. But it's also important to say that fasting by its nature, it does have a strain of or, or a type of hardship to it. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said to Aisha, indeed, the greater you're, ti you, you, you're tired, the greater your reward. Um, but this doesn't mean that we seek to become tired or we seek to worship Allah in the most um, industrious way that's possible. In summary it's good to get our children used to fasting. Um, so even, even if it's that if they become very hungry, even if we say to them, okay, go to sleep for a little while. Um, so it becomes easier for them. We should do this, but we should get them used to doing the fasting. Inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow. At the same time, Seven o'clock your time, nine o'clock our time. Salam alaikum. Uh, Sheikh Zaki, shukran. Jazakallah khair. Tom, thank you. Sheikh Aqeel, Jazakallah khair. Barakallah bikum jamia. Abdul Hakim, Jazakallah khair. May Allah have your scale of hasanat with, uh, with hasanat. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum.